Hello everyone, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries and today I would like to share with you some uh, modeling techniques that were required or that are required for a product that I'm designing. It needs this thing called a wave spring. The good thing about a wave spring is it gives you a lot of force within a short distance in a regular, uh, a relatively uh, large diameter. And the very first thing I do is start with expressions. <clears throat> so this wave spring is going to have a diameter, a D, uh, that's going to be three. So a diameter of three. Uh, by the way, if you want to comment your expressions, you could do slash slash and you can say this is the diameter. So that's one way to do it. And if you take a look at what I've done now, there is a comment column and the comment goes there when you hit slash slash, or you could just double click in this little cell. So then <clears throat> that's the diameter. Then there's a THK. That's the thickness of the spring material. And for this one, it's going to be uh, 0.125. Then there's the number of lobes, if you will. I'm going to call that uh, uh, N2. N2 number of lobes, and that's going to be four. Number of lobes. Okay, and then there's N1, and that is going to be six. That's the number of ripples as the spring is created. So I'm going to say number of ripples. And N2 and N1 are going to be constants, or I should say unitless, because they're not lengths, they're just numerical multipliers. And so if I don't make them constants, I can have troubles later. And then there's going to be a T variable, and that's going to be a constant also. Constant, unitless, and T always equals 1 when you create a law curve. And uh, let's see. And then the last little bit um, I will call W. And W is the width. Uh, the, the, the spring has a profile. It'll have a THK, which is uh, just 0.125. Actually, actually, I'll say it's 0 0.05. And the width of the spring, and that will be a length, will be 0.2. And I'm going to say width of the spring material. Okay. And the THK, I forgot to comment that. Thickness of the spring material. All right. So there is a lot there that I've just typed in. Um, I'm also going to have three variables, X, T, Y, T, and Z, T. And X, T is the diameter. We want the yt to be the center of the spring. So xt is going to be the diameter divided by 2. I'll put that in parentheses. Times the sine of the number of turns, which is n2 times t times 360. Okay. Then we'll have zt, d over 2 times the cosine, N2, times T, times 360. Okay. I'm going to make another expression called amp. And amplitude, I think, will be best if it's 0.125. Like that, 0.125. And now I can put in YT. YT will be T times the number of lobes, which is N2, uh, times the amplitude plus THK. So we're multiplying that whole thing. Okay, so now that I have something working uh, in YT, I'm going to add on some terms that will make it wave. So here's the basic yt, that's t times n2 times AMP, amp plus thk. And I'm going to put that in parentheses. And I'm going to add the wave term. 
Now the wave term is something times the sign, some numerical value, which we'll define later. In this in parentheses and saying 0.25 uh, times sine 6 times t times 360. Okay, that's what we're adding. And say, okay. So as you can see, this thing is waving now, but it's not waving the right amount because I wanted to just get it to wave. And then I'll go and make it a little bit more perfect. So let's do control E. And the number of times that it's waving has to be updated. And the number of times it's waving should be N1 plus 0.5. So instead of 6, I'm going to put N1 plus 0.5. And then it's got to be multiplied by N2 as well, times N2. And apply that. And now, as you can see, it's waving the right amount. Um, now, the only thing that I have to um, update is the actual amplitude, because um, these lobes should be touching each other, not overlapping. So it's just the amplitude that is not correct. So let's go to the amplitude. Now the amplitude is given by this 0.25. And instead of 0.25, it should be something else. And I'm going to put that something else in parentheses. And that something else is AMP divided by 2 plus THK. And we're going to divide that by N1 plus 1 times 2 times N2 like that. Let's apply it. Say okay. And that looks perfect now. Okay, what's next? Next, we've got to create a sketch at the very end of the curve. And that curve is going to be a path, or that sketch is going to go on a path. It's going to look like that. Say okay. And what we need is the profile of the spring. It's a rectangle. It is centered, I'm using the midpoint command, centered like that. It's collinear with the end of that, and it has a width, which is W. There's W. It has a THK, like that. And that is the profile of the wave spring. Finally, I've got to do a sweep. And if I don't do the sweep correctly, this profile will rotate all over the place. And so I've got to use the surface uh, sweep. And I've got to uh, select the drive curve. There's the drive curve. And the uh, direction will be vector direction. And we're going to use the y vector. Uh, we're going to make sure that preserve shape is on. And say OK. And there you have it. There's the wave spring that is necessary. Uh, let's test it a little bit. So since we did spend a lot of time typing in expressions, we can go to the diameter and see what happens when we make it a 5 inch diameter. Good. We can go to the amplitude and make it a 0.25 amplitude. Good. That's working. We can go to the width uh, and make it a 0.5 width. Nice. So this is everything that we want in a wave spring. Okay, again, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries. Please like and subscribe if you appreciate this content. And um, tell all of your friends if you liked the video. If you didn't like the video, just, just don't tell anybody. <laughs> Take care.